salvation through sacrifice, through, through, through blood and through Calvary and through victory, Lord. Lord, we give you praise this morning. We ask for more of your presence, Lord, as we worship you. We ask, Lord, that you change hearts, God, as we, as, as we worship the sacrifice and the victory accomplished on the cross. We give you the praise, Lord. We love you.
grateful for your love and for your grace and for your power. But this morning we're grateful for the hope that lies within us. We thank you, Father, that you've never failed us, you've never forsaken us. Time and time again you've come to our rescue and time and time again you've made a way. And so, Lord Jesus, this morning, all morning long, make us conscious that God goes before us, that he opens the doors, that he makes a crooked straight, that he makes the rough places plain, that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. We pray, O Holy Spirit of God, this morning, that you would open our hearts and our minds to your Holy Spirit. Pray for those that are grieving today, Father, that have suffered an unusual loss this week. We pray, Father, for the Hartman family that you'll be with them, that they'll know your presence this morning in a very special and a very real way. Pray for Shelby today and ask for physical touch in her life. You know others, Lord, that are calling on God for physical needs, some that are calling on God for spiritual needs, some, Lord, have relational needs today. Father, you know every need, and you said that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we're trusting you, we're believing you to bring glory to your name. Use our lives for your glory. Guide us this morning. And, Father, for the way that you'll help us and for the way that you'll answer prayer, for the way that you'll go before us, we'll give you the praise. For us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. I want to welcome every visitor this year. Trusting God to minister to you all morning long. Let me make these announcements this morning. There are several announcements immediately after the service. There is a bridal shower, and all ladies are invited. Now, whether you brought food or didn't bring food, or whether you brought a gift or didn't bring a gift, that's fine. But every lady is invited to the bridal shower immediately after the service in the foyer of the church. Men, I, I guess uh, you need to get out and get out quickly and uh, let the ladies do their thing. So it, it's a, it'll be a great time and uh, for the ladies and a great time for, for um, Tim and Malika. And so we're grateful for their lives and what God is doing in their lives. And of course, we expect Tim to stay and bear the burden of all this. And uh, it, uh, we'll have a great celebration together. Fall discipleship classes are coming down the pipe. And so uh, be sure to, to be looking over the Sunday school hour. The Friend Factory events, there's a fantasy football, I heard a little competition, I thought, in the foyer of the church this morning. I'm not sure. It's coming right along, and so be sure to, to, to uh, sign up or to call to, to call Larry if you uh, have, have some question. Homecoming is October 6th, and so put it on your calendar. Don't let anything interfere with your uh, with October 6th, 80 years of celebration. We'll be burning the note. And uh, it'll be a good time in the Lord, and so there'll be lots of things for the kids. I think there's uh, several things for the kids and several things for the adults, and be, be cooking and be, uh, be inviting, especially be inviting to be praying in these days ahead. And then we want to uh, remember the child sponsorship lunches. That's uh, September 29th, and I know that you'll be a part of that. It's $10 a lunch. It's a very, um, it's a very simple way of supporting three kids. Uh, somewhere around the world that need it, need your help, and I think it's it's so unbelievably easy to uh, to buy a box lunch and to stay and uh, and to uh, and, and to, to uh, eat together. For some of you, the one eat together. Some of you, Jason's has an announcement as well. Yeah, just in regards to, to homecoming, um, we're uh, doing the homecoming choir this year. We're just going to do one song that if you've ever sung in our choir, you, you will know that song. Uh, we're going to rehearse next Sunday. Uh, after after service, we'll provide a, a meal and um, and we'll just do a, a, a quick rehearsal after church on Sunday and go through that one song. So if you've, if you've ever sung in the choir, we'd love to have you back for uh, this homecoming service. And that's kind of the goal is, is to bring back um, uh, former members of the choir. Um, I know that I've sung in homecoming choirs at the church in Indianapolis uh, that uh, Dad used to pastor at. And, other various churches when I was in Nashville. It, it's just a lot of fun. So if you know uh, folks that um, maybe they, they moved elsewhere, um, I'd be encouraged you to invite them to uh, join us in the, for the homecoming service. If, they, if they've got a good voice and they've sung in the choir, invite them for choir. So I encourage you to do that. All right, you disqualified that. Did you get it? Yeah. If they have a good voice <laughs> and a sung in the choir, invite them to the choir. All right. Well, I appreciate all that God is doing and 
all that God wants to do. The message this morning is just a little different. <clears throat> and so I, I hope you'll give me a little grace this morning. And that the Lord will, the Lord will help us. We've been uh, we've been uh, <clears throat> doing Sunday school stories that we love. I, I can't say that um, that this Sunday school story, that this is much of a Sunday school story. There was a, a, a book written several years ago, a, a little book, uh, The Prayer of Jabez. But I, I can't say that I ever learned about Jabez in Sunday school. But uh, he, he's an interesting character in the Word of God. And it's just for a few moments, I just kind of, I just want to speak to you. I just want to really talk to you and ask the Lord to help us in, in these days ahead. Uh, I, I, I want to speak to you living above average. And this is really the story of, of Jabez. And um, it, it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting story, interesting story out of First Chronicles. If you want to turn to, to that scripture, you're welcome to do that this morning. You'll find that First Chronicles has a lot of names, and so so you, then you, you get to the text this morning, and, and the dynamic shifts. Some people say that you're one in a million. Probably you've heard that little that little saying. Maybe you've said it to somebody else. You're a one in a million. Well, the truth of the matter is, you're about one in seven billion. That, that our earth is somewhere between six and seven billion people and that you're just one of nearly seven billion people. And, and, but the truth of the matter is that even though you're one of seven billion people, you're very unique. I mean, they can, they can look at your DNA and, 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 and find you just about anywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm afraid to give my DNA to some of those people. I'm afraid they'll catch all the convicts in my family. And so... I just think to myself, I'm not going to send my DNA off because uh, I don't want to impugn any of my family relatives. And so uh, there's one in a million that are, that are, that are, that are in, in, when it comes to it. But you're unique. You're, you're, your fingerprints are unique. Your iris is unique. Uh, there are several things uh, about you that, that are very unique. You're, 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 you're not average because you're unique. Are, are you with me? You're not an average person. You are a very unique person that indeed God made you for purpose and, and God, God has put you on this earth for purpose. That, 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 that you're not average. That you're, you're, you are unique. I, I believe and I think the story of, uh, of Jabez reminds us that, that all of us are to live above average. That, that in our lives that there should be something in our lives that motivates us that that, that helps us to, to kind of kind of move our lives forward. I want to tell you up front at the end of the service, I'm going to give an invitation. And the invitation is just simply this, that if you want to come and pray and ask the Lord for something in your life, then I want you to come and pray and ask the Lord for something in your life. I, I just think that, that they were too shy about asking God, and I th sometimes think that we're too shy to publicly ask God for things. I also think that sometimes when we publicly do something, that the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit marks it in our mind and marks it in, in our lives. I, people have knelt here at these altars, and before they got out of the door, God had already answered their prayer. Now, God had already answered their prayer before they knelt at these altars. Because God knew what was going to happen in the service and God knew how they were going to pray. But the answer was in the foyer as they walked out the door. And so I, I'm going to give an invitation after the service. The, 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 the text is found in, in, in the book of Chronicles. is a very interesting book, nine, nine chapters of genealogy. And, and sometimes you can get lost in that genealogy. And for some people, it's very interesting. For other people, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to wade through. And there's over 600 names that are, are mentioned in, in the gene, genealogy in, in First Chronicles. And there's, there's 600 generations of men. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, out of these 600 generations or these 600 men, God gives special attention to Jabez. That then all of a sudden, there, there's, there, there's, it's almost like a, the, 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 the Holy Spirit stops and knows that he's inspiring. And, then you, and you, you, you get a little sense that something's happening that's a little different. God names Jabez and, and talks about Jabez and gives him special recognition. And you think to yourself, how is it? How is it? What's special about Jabez? Why? What made Jabez special? And so for a few moments, we want to look at that. 
what made him above average, what made him unusual, what made him, what made God single him out in, in the midst of all these, what, what God what God looked at when he looked at the life of Jabez. And so we get a little thumbnail sketch. There's only two verses. That's about the only time in the, in the Bible that, that Jabez is discussed in all in these two verses. But there's three secrets of his life that that, uh, that, that I believe the, the Holy Spirit would help us to, to look at this morning. Let's read the text out of 1 Chronicles chapter 9, chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to have you stand as we read it together, if you can. And just, uh, just two simple verses, and we'll have prayer. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And God granted his request. What request do you want God to grant? I'm just going to tell you something. You need to pray for God to grant Ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and it shall be opened. Father, in these few moments that we have together this morning, speak to us from the Word of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, when I read the text to you, I probably should have gone back and, and gave, uh, given a, a little uh, of the text prior to and after, but you know, the genealogy is just names and uh, sons and daughters, and it, it's it's just kind of an interesting text. It's really quite mundane until we get here, and it's so different from what's been written in this genealogy that, that it actually pops out. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my life. Let your hand be, be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God, and God granted his request. So for a few minutes, I want to talk about three secrets to living a life above average. The first thing that happens is you need a great ambition. A great ambition in your life. Jabez's prayer is simply says, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. While Jabez's friends were satisfied with being average, going through the motions, Jabez petitions God, and he says to God, enlarge my territory. Lord, I want you to do something significant in my life. Lord, I, I seek your blessing. Lord, I want to enlarge my territory. He says that he wants something out of the ordinary. That he just didn't want to live an average life or an ordinary life. That he wanted to expand. He wanted to grow. He wanted God to enlarge his territory. He was saying to God, expand my vision. Expand my dream. Give me a goal in life. Make me something above the ordinary, the usual. Do something unusual. Do something powerful. Do something grand in my life. He wanted something special and great. He wanted to get the most gusto out of life that he possibly could. He wanted God, most importantly, to deepen his relationship with God. He wanted God's blessing more deeply in his life. It's a simple prayer. Enlarge my territory. Let's face it. That the majority of Westerners, if we're not careful, are living, are just drifting in life. They're just going through the motions in life. Many, if not most, have no goals, no purpose, no aim, no desires. It's as if they've settled with just getting by. 
is if I can just survive. I, I do get that. I think if we're not careful, we, we, just, we just live there rather than asking God to do something supernatural in our lives. If we're not careful, we, that we're just like the crowd, that, that just, we just float with the crowd. But Jabez says, Lord, I want you to stretch me. I want you to help me. I want you to enlarge my territory. I want you to do something that you've never done before and do it in my life. Lord, give me the dream and help me to, to fulfill the dream. Give me the grace and strength and power to accomplish your will. For all of us in this auditorium and those that are listening, somewhere in your life, there needs to be a quiet moment or quiet moments in your life with the Word of God and with the Holy Spirit of God that says, Oh Lord, help me to dream again in my life. Help me to move out of the doldrums in my life. If you stop dreaming, you start dying. If there is no goals, there's no growth. If you, if you have no vision, there, there's very little future ahead in our lives. As long as your horizon is expanding, you're a healthy human being. But, but when it comes to the place that we accept the ordinary, the mundane in our life, then we miss the very best that God wants to give us in our lives. He said in his word, I want you to have life and I want you to have it more abundantly. I want to, to fulfill your life. I want to move in your life. I want, to, I want to do something powerful in your life. Several years ago, I passed in Indianapolis, and in Indianapolis, there was a, the Shepherd Community. It was a great mission of the Church of the Nazarene. Jay Hyatt still is doing a great job there in Indianapolis, Indiana. Kind of interesting, uh, the, uh, uh, this has been several years ago, but statistically, Indianapolis, or the, the inner city of Indianapolis at least, went, went at an 80% turnover in a year's time. So if, if you had, it was a very mobile society, very poor society in the inner city. And so think about a school teacher. You have 40 kids that are, that are in your class. Uh, that's too many, isn't it? Let's say 30 kids in your class. That's still too many, isn't it? All right, let's go for 20. You have 20 kids in your class. Now we're dreaming this morning. 20 kids in your class. And by the end of, your, the, end of the year, there's only four kids left in that class that started the year. That 80% of the society in, in, in inner city in, in Indianapolis was mobile. It was transient. It was, it was going from one landlord to the next. They called it the cycle of poverty. And part of the mission of, of Shepherd Community was breaking the cycle of poverty because poverty is cyclical. Would you agree with me? That most often that, that poverty is, is cyclical. We talk about it in, in the church, the generational curse, that, that from one generation to the next generation to the next generation, there's this, this generational curse unless somebody is, breaks the cycle, unless somebody says, I want to be intentional about doing the will of God, unless somebody cries out to God and says to God, oh Lord, I want something more in my life. It's all right to say, I want something more than my parents. I want something more than society. I want something more than my neighbors. I want a different relationships. I want different career paths. I want something different in my life. I want and seek God, the Holy Spirit, to do something powerful in my life. Somewhere in our lives, we, we need a great ambition when we cry out to God that says, enlarge my territory. Lord, do something in my life that hasn't been done. And let's be honest this morning that much of our lives are cyclical anyway. It's repetitive behavior. We have the same fight with our spouses over the same things, over and over and over 
again. We struggle with a besetting sin. It's not just one sin or ten sins or twenty sins, but it's usually the reoccurring sin in our life, and it becomes cyclical in our lives. So much of our spending habits are cyclical in our lives. So much of our behaviors and the way that we respond to people are cyclical in our life. We continue with the same thing over and over again. Jabez says, out of all this used genealogy, I want something different in my life. I want change in my life. I want purpose in my life. I want direction in my life. I want the Holy Spirit of God to do something new and unusual in my life. There are common misconceptions. Some people think that we, we confuse with humility with fear. We, we have this idea, well, I can never do that. Mama didn't do it, Daddy didn't do it. And we think to ourselves, I, I, I can't do that. I've heard people say, well, just little old me. And I think to myself, well, you're uniquely made by God. You've been designed by God for the purpose of God to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. God can use you in a different way. God can glorify his name in your life. That's not humility generally. That's generally fear. Fear that I can't do it. Or fear that I'll step out and I'll fail. It's fear in our lives if we're not careful. Some people say, if I get a big dream, then I'll, I'll get a big head. And I'll just remind you this morning that, that God will pop that bubble. <laughs> that God has a way of humbleness. This idea that, that, we, that we, we're humble and that, that we, we, can't, we can't move forward in our lives, or we can't grow in our lives, or we can't dream in our lives, is not biblical, Jabez says, Lord, increase my territory, enlarge my territory. Let something happen in my life that has never happened before. Help me to break this cycle in my life. Help me to break this cycle for my home's sake, for my children's sake. Help me, Lord, enlarge my territory. Another common misconception is we confuse contentment with laziness. I quote Philippians quite often, often. You remember the Apostle Paul said, In whatsoever state I am, there will I be content. I understand that it's, he's saying that I'm a contented person. And you, you listen to Paul and his writings. He said, I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. I've been lived in all kinds of different circumstances. I've been in luxury and in poverty, but it doesn't make any difference in whatever state I am. There will I be content. Whatever the situation in my life. But sometimes I'm afraid that contentment is an excuse for laziness. That we could do better. That we should do better. That we ought to do better. That we haven't aspired for anything different in our lives. We're satisfied with living in the ordinary, living in the mundane, living the way it's always been, living in the same cycle. Periodically I have conversations with people and I, I, not, I always struggle, I always struggle with my role as a pastor. I, I struggle with several things in my life, but that's one of them. I don't know sometimes when I'm at the hospital if I should be a nurse and say something that I think they might ought to address, or just be a pastor and say, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. It's always a struggle for me. But also there are times that I, I feel a little bit parent, parental. Does that make sense? Kind of like you do. 
And I think to myself, well, I can say it maybe where nobody else can say it. And so I think to myself, there's an individual that's very gifted and very talented, and they're living below the possibilities of their life. And I'll generally start the conversation this way. It's not my job to make you discontent, but there are opportunities in life that you need to latch on to. There are opportunities in your life that you can hold on to. That there's a greater future in your life. Sometimes contentment in our life, if we're not careful, is, is contentment just to, to, to live the same cycle over and over. Another misconception is we confuse little thinking with spirituality. Jabez is, is, is an example of thinking big and trusting God at the same time. He's thinking beyond himself. He's thinking beyond his own possibilities, beyond his own ability, beyond his own strength. And he's trusting God at the same time that God, you can help me. God, you can increase my territory. God, you can guide my life. God, you can make me successful in this area. Great men and women of faith are simple, ordinary people with great thoughts, great, great ideas, great ambitions, great dreams, and great follow-through. They're just ordinary people who ask God for something bigger and better in their lives. The third, the second thing we, we need to, to look at, see it, the secret of Jabez's prayer is you need a growing faith. Jabez is, 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 is ordinary and yet, and yet above average. He lives a life above average. There's no mention of his education. There's no mention of a title. There's no mention of his wealth. There's no mention of his ability. There's no mention of these things in his life. If he's a very common man with very common faith. And some think that Jabez has a handicap. His name is Jabez, which literally means in the Hebrew language, painful. But perhaps he has a handicap in his life. And so his mother has named him painful. It's been painful at birth. And some think the possibility there's a disability in his life. But Jabez doesn't allow his life to be slapped with a label. There are plenty of people that have been labeled in their lives that have overcome the labels that have been placed on them. Many of you sitting in this auditorium and those that are listening, somewhere in your life you have been labeled in some way. You're not the student that your brother was. You can't accomplish what your sister accomplished. We've been labeled in our lives. And so was probably Jabez, because his name means pain. That there's some type of disability in his life. But when Jabez prays the prayer, he asked God to increase his territory. And he asked God to work in his life beyond his label. I don't know how you've been labeled in your life. I don't know how Satan has labeled you in your life. I suspect it's the same labels he puts on many, or if not most people. You're a failure. You're not good enough. You blew it. You messed up. And all these labels have been placed on our lives. But it's ultimately, it's up to us 
to ask God, the Holy Spirit, to help us to move above, of, of beyond the labels. Jabez has a, has, has a growing faith. He has a growing faith in God, and he knows that God can do something beyond himself. The third thing that you'll notice about the secret of Jabez's prayer in his life is that you need a, a genuine prayer life. A genuine prayer life. Sometimes it's just getting from crisis to crisis in our lives. And I understand that life is difficult. As a matter of fact, I, I told someone th th this week that it's almost as if people are just holding on, barely holding on. I understand where we live and the culture we live in, but I want you to know that it begins with a prayer line that says, God, I need you, and you can help me with this, this issue. I need you, and you can make a way in my life. I need you, and you can expand the territory in my life. I need you, and I can break this cycle of relationships in my life. I need you, and I can break this cycle of finances in my life. I need you, Lord, and you can break this cycle and help me to move forward in my life. It begins with prayer. It's asking God. It's trusting God. It's intentionally seeking God and saying, Lord, you're the one that can help me. You're the one that can move me forward. You're the one that can strengthen me. You're the one that can guide me. You're the one that can make a way where there is no way. After all, the Bible says that he'll make the crooked straight, the rough places plain, the darkness light. He'll go before us and he'll have his way in our lives. It begins with prayer. Out of all that genealogy, 600 names in First Chronicles, pretty mundane in all those 600 names, Jabez is, is called out and is pointed out by God, the Holy Spirit, in the Word of God because he asked God. Because he prayed. Why not ask God for something greater in your life? Why not ask the Lord for something powerful in your life? Why not ask the Lord to do something that you haven't been able to do for yourself and allow God to work out his perfect will in your life? You need a genuine prayer life. A prayer life that says, Lord, you're going to have to help me with my kids. You're going to have to help me with my finances. You're going to have to help me with my health. You're going to have to help me. Lord, please. Increase my territory. His three requests. And I'll hasten. He prayed for God's power in his life. He said, bless me. Bless me. He prayed for God's power in his life. I talk to the Lord just about nearly everything. I talked to the Lord when I was going to buy a car. I don't think he cares whether I get a Honda, a Nissan, a Ford, or General Motors. But I hate buying cars. I'm not a mechanic. It's always a poke in the dark for me. And I always pray, oh God, help me to find the car that you want me to find. And most often the Lord gives me a car that I need. I asked the Lord, we, uh, Jason and I took a trip this week, preached a funeral, Jason sang in, in Indianapolis, I prayed before we left, Lord, watch over us on the way, watch over us on the way home. Certainly we got to, to, to uh, a little bit before London, Kentucky, and the road changed, you've all seen the news today, and certainly the Lord protected us, we, we made it home by the, by the help of the grace of God. Pray about everything. Jabez prays for God's power. It, it, for some, it may feel like a selfish prayer, but, but all he's seeing is, Lord, help me, bless me, guide me, help me in my career, help me in my relationships, help me with, with the desires of my heart, help me with my, with my ambition. Some people say, especially around the church, that ambition is, is a bad thing. Let me tell you, ambition is neither bad nor good. Is that not correct? It is neither 
always good and it's neither always bad. Ambition is morally neutral. It's what we do or the motives that we have for that ambition. If the motive is for me and mine and my desires, and the way that I look and my appearances and all that, those are ill fated motives that God won't bless. But if it's for the glory of God, I believe our prayer life is endless. I believe it's fair game to ask God to help us. I believe it's fair game to ask God if it's for the glory of God. Evidently, Jabez's motives were right. It's for the glory of God because in this particular instance, God answers his prayer and increases his, his territory. Selfish motives are, are, never, are, are never blessed, but genuine motives that glorify God are, are blessed by God. He prayed for God's power. He said, bless me. He prayed for God's presence in his life. Let your hand be with me. Let the hand of God be with me. I don't want to do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. I need your touch, and I need your power, and I need your strength. I need you, Lord. I want your presence to go with me. I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. And then he prayed for God's protection over his life. Keep me from harm, so I'll be free from pain. Lord, Lord, keep me from harm. He asked for God's protection over his life. Jabez's prayer is, out of all that genealogy, is powerful because he simply asked God to enlarge his territory. He asked God to do something extraordinary in his life. He asked God to do something beyond himself beyond his power and beyond his ability if it's for the glory of God if it's for the glory of God then we should ask God we should touch God we should ask him for his strength for his power that he might move and work in our lives so we don't live in this single gold life and live what's ordinary. But God, get us out of this cycle. Get us out of this venue in our life. And move us toward God and the kingdom.
are this morning, September 8th, 2024. We're asking you, Jesus. We're asking you for something very specific this morning. Father, we're asking you to make a way in our lives. We, you said in your word you have not because he asked not. And so, Lord, in this morning, we're asking you, we're seeking God this morning and asking that, that your Holy Spirit would move and work in our lives. We ask it for the glory of God. We don't ask it selfishly, Lord, but we want you to bring glory to your name, you to resolve, you to, to, to supply, you to meet the need, you, Lord, to do whatever it is that, that you want to do in our lives. And so, Lord, this morning, we're on record as seekers of the Lord. We're on record this morning, leaving God, we're on record, Lord, asking you to increase our territory. We go on record, Lord, knowing that God is in you, that we have faith in you, that we know, Lord, you've done great and mighty things, which so we know not. You said, call to me, and I will answer thee, and I'll show thee great and mighty things, which we know not. And so, Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God, meet me.
this morning, we pray. And Father, for what you'll do, for the way that you'll help us, for the way that you'll bring glory to your name, we'll give you the praise. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And amen, you are dismissed. God bless you. Thank you.